What is up YouTube? Ultimate Lock here and today we're going to be doing internal battery repair on Super Nintendo games. Now Super Nintendo games, majority of them have little internal save batteries such as these right here, CR2032 batteries. There are a few games that don't have that which are Contra, pretty much any game that has a password function or doesn't record high scores, they do not have internal batteries. Ghosts and Goblins is one of them. Uh, Mega Man games have passwords so they don't use uh, internal batteries but majority of games do use internal save batteries and these batteries have a lifespan of 10 to 12 years. After that lifespan they're essentially dead even if they hold a save file such as this game right here it still doesn't matter they're technically dead. If you were to put this into a Super Nintendo and play it for about four to five hours the battery inside here would almost indefinitely die. So you do not want to go off and have Super Nintendo games with bad batteries and lose all your save data. A alternative method to this will be to get a Retron 5, which I have. Uh, take the basically internal save battery, or I should say the save data from the internal battery and put it onto the Retro 5 and then go off, do the battery repair, which will remove the save data. And then you put it back into the Retron 5 and you take the save data from your SD card and place it back onto the card, which is a little neat feature that we're going to be doing in this video. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. What you're going to need is some solder. You're going to need a CR2032 battery with the tabs going downward. You can get these off of eBay. Now, you do not want to get a CR2032 battery with the tabs like this. This is actually a CR2025 battery. It doesn't really matter what battery you have as long as the tabs are correct because in all honesty, as long as you have a battery, it's going to work. You just need a positive and a negative and it's going to hold the save file. There's nothing really that special about these batteries. So it doesn't really matter where you get them. The important thing is, is that you get the correct tabs because with these tabs right here, you're not going to be able to get them into the Super Nintendo game. So uh, yeah, you're also going to need a 3.8 security bit. This is used for Game Boy games, N64 games, Super Nintendo, and I think if, actually I think that's about it. And maybe Sega Genesis or something along those. Actually, no, not Sega Genesis. But essentially, this is for Nintendo products. Uh, you can easily open up the games to confirm whether or not the games are authentic. So even if you're not wanting to do internal battery repair, these things come in handy very, very much if you're looking to buy retro video games. You never want to pay like $45 for a counterfeit game. So take my word on it. Buy one of these. Every time you see a, you buy a game, open it up beforehand to make sure you're actually getting an authentic game. So without further ado, let's get started. Also, um, the 4.8, or actually, no, it's 4.5 security bit is for the consoles, for the GameCube and uh, Super Nintendo consoles. So if you're wanting to go and clean out your console, you're gonna need to buy one of those. All right, so here's the PCB board. As you can see right here, you have all these silver solder dots, and then you have these two still, uh, solder pads right here and right here. This is what holds the battery in. This is what you're gonna need to add solder to, but beforehand, we're gonna flip this over. And as you can see here, this is where the battery is, right? And this is the way that's facing. You have to do the same thing on this side. With this battery, you gotta make sure that it's in the correct side. So you're gonna need to do that. So make sure that this tab right here is going this way instead of going this way because then you'll have the battery in backwards which will then obviously not work. Okay, so uh, let's flip this over. Now, it's very, 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 very important that you do not go off and screw up and desolder any of these because if you desolder any of these, it's gonna remove any of these black parts and this is either RAM or some kind of saving device. And if you desolder any of this, your game is not going to work, obviously. So it's very important that you don't screw up. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys a special grip, but before that, let me add some solder to these little solder pads. And what the reason why I'm adding solder to this is because it makes it much, much more easier to heat up the entire pad. And if the pad is evenly heated, then I can go off and remove the battery much more effectively. Now, I think you, yeah, you can see. You can partly see. Okay. 
And it looks like I did it. So let me uh, move the plastic parts out of the way. Now, you're gonna be holding the PCB like this. Make sure your pinky's right here. Your middle finger's right here. Your index finger's right here. And your thumb's right here. You're gonna grip it like this. It's very important that you learn this grip. This is the most important thing about this video, right? It's showing you how to grip it. Because otherwise, you're gonna be trying to hold the battery you're gonna to try to hold the PCB board. You're gonna be trying to hold the soldering iron all at the same time. There's three things you're holding at once. And you actually have to move the battery. Just, just putting the soldering thing to this is not gonna do anything because you would actually have to tug on the battery as well. So with this lay hand layout that you're doing, you're gonna have your index finger pulling backwards on the battery to remove it. So as I said before, we're gonna go off and take the soldering iron. We're gonna set it right here. Because we put the additional solder on, it's gonna heat up the pad nice and evenly. We're just gonna pull back with our index finger. And ta-da. Now, I would recommend wearing gloves because sometimes when you pull back on it, a little bit of solder will get on the back of your hand. It's not gonna kill you, but uh, if you wanna avoid the little bit of pain, then you might wanna wear some gloves because obviously the solder is gonna be very hot. So we're gonna do the same thing for this. Um, when it comes to this, and once you have one side removed, then you can actually use gravity to your effect. If you, you can't use gravity if one side, or if it's on this side right here, so, or, uh, uh, you can't use gravity if both sides are still connected because even if you dislodge one side, the other side will hold it in place. So once you've dislodged one side, you can just go off and remove it and then you can use gravity. Kind of screwed up the explanation of that, but I think you got the uh, gist of it. So now uh, the battery has been removed. We just need to install a new one. All right. So make sure that you do not put the battery in backwards again. You're going to want to have it like this because you want to have it on the positive and negative. Okay, now I'm gonna just use my index finger and I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna heat up the back pad and I'm just gonna get that tab to go right through. Now, I don't know if you'll actually, crap. I don't know if you can see it now, but as you can see, the tab did go through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some additional solder just to make sure that that stays in. All right, I know it's really blurry right now, but it should focus in. So take some solder. And let's add. Okay, let it heat, uh, cool down. Now one side is in, the other side is not in. So you can see right there. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna place it. I'm going to manipulate the little tab right here and I'll push it down to where it's going to be right as if it could get in. I'm going to hold it with my index finger and I'm going to take the soldering iron. I'm going to go right here, heat up this bit of solder. I'll push it into the correct hole. Okay. And that should be good. And we're done. The internal battery replacement is complete. As you can see here, it's pretty well on there. See on the back here, it's good to test it. All you need to do is do this. As long as it's not coming loose or anything along those lines, obviously the battery is good. So we're gonna place this back into the PCB board. And we are going to go off and put it into the Retron and download my save file and then put it into a Super Nintendo and make sure that the save file actually works. And uh, I just I just dropped that. All right, so now we're going to go off and test the new internal save better. We're going to take the Super Mario and we're going to place it into the Retron 5. 
Okay, now we're gonna go to game menu. Copy save the cart. Yes. And done. Now the Retron 5 has copied the save to this right here. And we're gonna go now hook up my Super Nintendo to my old CTR TV. And we're gonna go off and check to make sure that it actually did save. All right, guys, the moment of truth. Let's pop it in and see if the internal battery was good. World 56. It is good. So this confirms that the internal save battery has been repaired because once you remove this internal save battery, from the cart it deletes all memory and then the retron 5 save data was transferred correctly onto the new battery and it retained the information because now it's not on the retron 5 it's on the super nintendo so we can now confirm that this new battery is fully functional and working so as always guys make sure to comment rate and subscribe thanks for watching and hopefully this helped you out bye